Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we are talking about the release of iOS 11.2 and what a mess that has been, what a mess iOS 11 has been in general. In today's video, of course, we are discussing 11.2 and why it was released so urgently at 1 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Now, if you guys are unaware, this is typically unheard of for Apple to do something like this. Typically, iOS releases are Monday through Friday, typically around 10 a.m. and can come out all the way until 2 p.m., roughly in that time frame. But a weekend release at 1 a.m. in the morning is absolutely unheard of, guys. So if you guys aren't aware by now, iOS 11.2 has been released to the public as an urgent fix for a bug in 11.1.2. And I apologize for the delay in this video. I really just wanted to focus this video on a jailbreak update. And to do that, I really had to sit back and see where the situation took us after 11.2 came out and if it really did fix all the bugs with 11.1.2. So in this video, I'm going to focus on why 11.2 was so urgently released on Saturday morning. Then I'm going to talk about some of the new features in 11.2 real quickly. I've gone over this in past videos, so I'll just probably upon some of the major ones but like I said for the most part of this video I'm going to dive deep into jailbreaking and what the scene looks like and if jailbreaking is really coming to an end or not. So if you guys recall iOS 11.2 beta 5 was seeded to developers and public beta testers on Wednesday and following that we saw beta 6 on Friday December 1st. Now these updates were really minor and were only a couple megabytes you know roughly 50 or so so there really wasn't any outward facing changes that's why I really didn't cover too much of what was going on with them but with beta 6 in particular that pretty much seemed to be the golden master version we saw that by the build number being shorter and the update consisted of a two gigabyte download and installation which kind of told me that this was going to be the golden master version which would just rewrite over everything 11.2 has already installed and so if you guys are on iOS 11.2 beta 6 you will actually not receive another update to 11.2 as the final version because 11 11.2 beta 6 is the final version of 11.2. Anyway, like I said, what was surprising to me is that iOS 11.2 was seeded to everyone released to the public at 1 a.m. Saturday morning. Now, some users were reporting late Friday night that they were experiencing errors on iOS 11.1.2, that their device would just randomly respring every 30 seconds or so, practically making their device not usable. And this spread across all iOS devices, being the iPhone 10 the iPhone 8, 6, 7, whatever iOS device that you had running iOS 11.1.2 could possibly be affected. Now this didn't affect all devices because it only affected ones that had certain apps installed. Now no one app in particular caused this issue, but any app that pushed notifications to the device seemed to be the root issue. It was a notification error that had to do something with the time and date. So once your device reached a certain time on December 2nd, if you had notifications enabled on certain apps, particularly ones that don't use push notifications from a server but handle the notifications locally on the device, those seem to be the apps that were affected. Now, if just one of your apps on your device used this feature, then your device would just constantly respring every 30 seconds or so. And this was a major error affecting millions of iOS users. So that is why Apple pushed an immediate update. Now, it's surprising to me that Apple didn't come out with a minor point update like 11.1.3. Instead, they published iOS 11.2 to the public and just released that as the fix. It was discovered earlier in the evening that users running iOS 11.2 any of the betas so far were not affected by this issue this major bug seems to be the reason why apple pushed ios 11.2 to the public at 1 a.m on a saturday morning to address this major issue now i'm really not sure why this issue occurred or why apple is having so many problems with their ios as of late in general it seems to be there are so many issues with the iphone 10 they have come out with so many point updates for ios 11 already and it seems like every time they release an update to the public they're already in a beta for a new software in fact this seems to be the first time at least since we've been in the ios 11 stage 
that they haven't had a future beta of a future software be out when they released the latest current version of iOS. So that being said, I just kind of wanted to take a moment to realize how rare of an occurrence this is that Apple publishes a software on Saturday at 1 a.m. I mean, that is just absolutely unheard of, guys. And like I said, this is really attributed to how many errors and bugs there have been with iOS 11 regarding the iPhone 10 and I guess all the other iPhones in this case as well. I mean, this is just going to go down in history as one of the biggest flaws of iOS 11 and major glitches that have surfaced. So as I promised, I'm going to get a little bit more into the jailbreaking related news and whether you should update to iOS 11.2. Now, there are a couple ways to fix the iOS 11.1.2 error if you are still on that firmware and want to stay there. I mean, honestly, one of the best ways would just to be downgrade to an earlier firmware than 11.1.2. And for those users stuck on iOS 11.1.2 in that constant respring state, all you have to do is navigate to the settings app and change your date and time before December 2nd at 2.15 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And so just to clarify, this is done by entering the settings app, navigating to general, and then navigating to date and time and setting the time automatically. And this is the solution that Apple on their site suggests to fix this issue temporarily. Other users on Reddit have also found that if you disable notifications and background app refresh that that seems to solve the issue as well but just changing the date and time seems to be the simpler fix in this case. So thus far in this video, a lot of that has been public knowledge. For the rest of this video, I really just wanted to give my opinion on whether you should update to iOS 11.2 if some of the new features are really beneficial to the iOS experience, or if you should hold off on earlier firmware in anticipation for a new jailbreak utility. So that being said, just as a refresher, I'm going to go briefly over some of the new features found within iOS 11.2 so you can kind of decide for yourself if updating is worth it to you or not. So probably one of the most noteworthy new features features found within 11.2 is Apple Pay Cash. Now this is the peer-to-peer -peer payment method found within the Messages app right within the app drawer so you can send money from yourself to your friends right within the Messages app. Instead of using services like Venmo or PayPal, you can do this on Apple's native iOS. Anyway, while this feature was active in some of the later betas of 11.2, people are reporting that with the public release of 11.2, it is not quite yet active. And this is most likely because of the awkward release time. I doubt Apple was expecting to release iOS 11.2 so early on Saturday. I could see Apple Pay Cash being activated for the public within the next week or so. The next new feature on iOS 11.2 is specific to the iPhone 10, 8, and 8 Plus models. That is, of course, faster wireless charging. Now, instead of being limited to the 5 watt intake, the iPhones can now accept 7.5 watts and charge your phone faster than on previous iOS versions. Granted, if you don't have an iPhone 8 or 10, this feature really doesn't impact you at all. Aside from that, there are a ton more visual cues and nice additions and modifications to iOS 11.2. Now when you open up the control center and disconnect from Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for the first time, you will get these little informational pop-ups which explain to you what exactly you are doing. It notes that you are not actually turning the service off, you are just disconnecting whatever connections are currently active until tomorrow morning. Aside from that, most of the new features found within iOS 11.2 are very minor modifications. There's a little control center grabber on the iPhone 10. The calculator app has now been fixed to improve its latency. There's a new sports section within the TV app. Again, like I said, nothing major, but there's a nice update to visual cues, as well as to some of the apps to improve errors and add new features. So those are some of my favorite features found on iOS 11.2, and you can decide for yourself if they're worth it to upgrade to it, or if you want to stay on an earlier version of iOS in anticipation of jailbreaking. And so for the last part of this video, I really just wanted to dive into the topic of jailbreaking, taking a look at the community and what's going on in the jailbreaking scene, because as of late, a lot a lot of people have been bringing up the argument that jailbreaking is dying or it is in fact dead already. I mean the community still is massive but everyone is losing hope that a new utility especially for iOS 11 is never going to come. 
And I'm not going to lie, there are a lot of valid facts that support this argument. You know, a lot of researchers recently, when they find exploits, they've just been selling them. And a lot of people are thinking that these researchers are just in it for the money rather than to release a utility for the jailbreaking community. And as far as the community goes, a lot of devs have been complaining that the community is toxic and they want nothing to do with it. And really what has sparked this fuse all over again is in the last week or so, two of the major repos, the respiratories or sources that you add to install different tweaks and content within Cydia have shut down. The two repos I'm referring to are ModMyEye and ZodTTD. Now these have been around since the early ages of iOS jailbreaking, just like the Big Boss respiratory as well. A lot of people just read this fact and see, oh, yep, there's another stake in the coffin of jailbreaking that's killing it yet again. But when we analyze the situation realistically, there has not been a new tweak or new content added to Mod My Eye or Zod TTD in a long time meaning those respiratories have already been dying in a sense for quite a while. So the fact that they have shut down because they are no longer profitable or sustainable is really not that surprising. Granted, if you have purchased tweaks or other content from these respiratories, not to fear, they have been archived, so the content that was available on them is still available and will be available for the entirety of jailbreaking on iOS. But getting back to my earlier point, does this mean that jailbreaking is now dead just because these two respiratories have gone down? Absolutely not. The only repo that has really come out with new tweaks when a new jailbreak is released is the Big Boss Respiratory, and that is still alive and active and functioning. Furthermore, another argument that I touched upon briefly before is that security researchers are really only in it for the money and are trying to sell their exploits. But like I said, let's take a step back. Typically when a new security flaw or vulnerability is found within iOS by a big security research team, they report it to Apple's bug bounty program itself. They do in fact in some cases get a reward or some type of money or financial gain from this. But in cases like with Google's Project Zero, they really get no reward except for boosting their reputation as a trustworthy source of reporting bugs for the greater good of making iOS more secure. Now my biggest point here is once the bug has been reported by Apple and Apple fixes it and pushes it to the public, those security research teams then have the option to publish their findings publicly for everyone to see and figure out meaning jailbreak developers then have access to all their security flaws and vulnerabilities and kernel exploits in some cases that they have found. And we have seen this throughout the year with Google's Project Zero. They have come out multiple times. Ian Beer specifically has released what he has found to the public so that everyone can use this information on older iOS versions. Other than Project Zero, there are other people who do release exploits. Take Adam Donfield, who contributed to the community back in August by releasing his research on the exploits he found. Typically, this is known as Adam's exploit. But with all that being said, people are still upset with the fact that we have yet to see an iOS 11 utility be released. You know, it's almost been three months at this point. When are we expected to see a jailbreak? And I think that's the number one question that really no one can answer at this point in time. And that's kind of due to the shift of what's happening within the community. You know, we're moving away from the big jailbreak teams that come out and release a jailbreak because in the past, they would get rewarded for releasing the jailbreak. And now in this day and age, that is just not the case anymore. In today's world, we see new developers coming to the scene, creating and releasing jailbreaks just for the love of jailbreaking. And as an example of this, you can take a look at the number of jailbreaks that were made in 2016 compared to the ones that were made in 2017. In 2016, we had Pangu for 9.1, and Pangu for 9.3.3, which in a lot of people's mind was the last real jailbreak. But following that, before the year's end, we actually had Yalu for 10.1.1. Like I said, this begins the shift towards new, smaller developers coming to the scene, releasing jailbreaks just to release the jailbreak. But a lot of people are arguing that jailbreaking is dead and no new jailbreaks are coming out, and that in fact is really not that true. It really just comes down to what you consider to be a new jailbreak. There are still a ton of jail breaks coming out, but they're for older versions of iOS. Still, taking a look in 2017, we of course had Yalu for 10.2, which at the time was the current version of iOS that was out. 
but since then we've had the Home Depot jailbreak for iOS 9.1 to 9.3.4. We've had the Phoenix jailbreak for 9.3.5 for 32-bit devices. We've had the ETA Sun jailbreak for 8.4.1. And then as of late, the latest jailbreak that has come out has been Saigon for 10.2.1. Now a lot of these are half-baked, sure, and aren't finalized finished products, but they still are jailbreaks. And that is just something that we're going to have to accept going forward is that a lot of these jailbreaks that are coming out are not made by professional jailbreak teams anymore. They are made by developers within the jailbreaking community that want to create and release a jailbreak just for the love of jailbreaking. So that is why I really don't think jailbreaking is dead. It may be struggling, it may be going through a hard time and a very slow time, but I really see a big comeback in the works for the scene of jailbreaking. And the biggest reason being why is because of the iPhone 10. The biggest reason why jailbreaking was ever a thing in the first place was to customize the device in a new way that Apple has yet to think of. And really in the past three or four years, the past three, four devices being the iPhone 6, 6S, 7, and 8, not much has really changed. You know, we saw new jailbreaks and new tweaks come out for the iPhone 5 when we got the new screen size, the iPhone 6 yet again when we got an even bigger screen size, the iPhone 6S when we got 3D Touch. There were things that you could do with those features that were new and interesting that developers or just people in the jailbreak community wanted to see changed compared to stock iOS. But for so many years now with the same hardware from the 6S to the 7, you know, we got a camera update to the 8, we got wireless charging, there really hasn't been too many new features or hardware added to the devices or big substantial changes that is up until now with the iPhone 10 with a brand new screen. It'd be so amazing to see what developers do with that and with the notches at the top in particular. We have Face ID now. I can think of so many ways that developers could utilize that hardware in new and interesting ways that Apple has even yet to think of. In the end, I still just like jailbreaking for the minor quality of life changes that you can add, such as a dark mode for iOS. This is still something that Apple has yet to add after 11 iOS versions, guys. Long story short, my conclusion is that exploits are still getting released frequently. A lot of new young developers are coming into the scene and learning more about iOS, and jailbreaks are still being made, guys. It honestly just takes time so be patient anyway that's my updated spiel on jailbreaking and realistically what i think is going on within the community and what is likely to happen in the future i really don't know when a new jailbreak is coming out no you cannot downgrade your device to an older ios version to jailbreak if your device is getting slow, use City Eraser to unjailbreak and erase your device and restore it back to the current version of iOS that you're currently running. If some of your apps aren't working on your older jailbreak, go ahead and install Lower Install to use apps on lower iOS versions that are not supported. And of course guys, there is no iOS 11 jailbreak, so don't go looking for a download link. You will probably wind up on some malicious website that's going to install something pretty bad onto your device and or just give you a ton of pop-up bads. And lastly, if you like some of the new features in iOS 11.2, really go ahead and update at your own will. Of course, like I've said in all my past videos, the general rule of thumb is to stay on the lowest iOS version possible. The latest version of iOS that has been jailbroken is iOS 11.1.1. As we saw a jailbreak demo performed by Keen Lab, but their jailbreak has not been publicly released yet. So that being said, I would personally stay on iOS 11.1 or earlier just to ensure that you have the best possible chances to jailbreak if one does come out in the future for iOS 11. Anyway guys, if a new utility happens to arise for iOS 11, I will be the first one out notifying you guys of the fantastic news that iOS 11 has been jailbroken, but until then, stay tuned and follow my social media accounts, as well as subscribe to my channel to be notified on when new information like this happens to come out. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed my jailbreak update today. Let me know down in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with, and what some of your favorite tweaks would be for the iPhone 10 if a jailbreak was to come out for it. Anyway guys, like I said, stay tuned and thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Tony signing out.